Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the Fisher effect. Uh, we're going to use this to explain how inflation and interest rates are related. And so we're going to start with the Fisher equation, which is this. That I equals R plus pi, where I is equal to nominal interest rates. R is equal to real interest rates. And pi is equal to inflation. So you probably already see all the answers we need to know about this. There is a one-to-one -one relationship between inter nominal interest rates and inflation. And here is how you define real interest rates then. It's the nominal interest rates minus inflation. We can mess with this and rearrange it however we want to. Note that real interest is decided in the loanable funds market by the intersection of savings and investment. So let's do a quick example. In 1979, inflation was, uh, I don't know, 13-ish percent. Hey, I'll put the about there so you can't get too mad at me if I'm off by a percent or something. Uh, yeah, so inflation was 13%. What if you had given me a nominal interest rate of 17% during that time? What was the value of the real interest rate? Well, the real interest rate, I minus pi, is 17 minus 13 is actually only about 4%. Only 4% of that nominal interest rate is actually real interest. The rest is just accounted for by inflation. So let's go from there. Let's take a look at this real interest rate and where it's coming from. There's a savings and investment. There's interest rates. This is a loanable funds market with demanders who are investors who want to borrow money and suppliers or savers who are willing to lend money and the equilibrium interest rate determines how much lending and savings gets done. Not lending and savings, lending and borrowing. So what happens now if we change it? What if inflation falls to 9% and the nominal interest rates don't adjust right away? Well, the real interest rate would change. It would be 17 minus 9, which is 8%, which on our market up here looks like that. But this creates a surplus. So then our real interest rate must be 17 minus 9, which is 8%. And on our graph, that shows up as such. Great. But the problem is that this creates a surplus in our loanable funds market. There it is, see? Quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. And so that means R is gonna fall back down to its equilibrium value of 4%. So what will the new nominal interest rate be? Let's plug it back into our equation and solve for it. We need R equals I minus pi, which is four equals I minus nine, which is four plus nine equals I, which is a nominal interest rate of 13%. And so what happened in summary? When inflation fell by 4%, nominal interest rate matched it one for one and fell by 4%. And that is the general idea of your Fisher effect. And so here it is in writing so you can believe it. The one-to-one -one relationship between inflation and nominal interest rates is called the Fisher effect. So a quick uh, digression or something that's connected to my previous video on the quantity theory of money. This is a macro class. We're going to combine lots of stuff. Uh, what's quantity theory of money? MV equals PY. By the way, I have a video on this. You can watch it if this makes no sense, or you can stop watching this video now if you don't care. Uh, inflation is the growth rate of the money supply minus the growth rate of real GDP. So we're going to start from there, from there. And let's say that real GDP is growing at 3%, money supply is growing at 5%, and the real interest rate is 5%. Inflation then would be 5, the growth rate of money supply, minus 3, the growth rate of GDP, is 2%. So nominal interest rates then, the next thing we might be interested in, are R plus pi, which is five, there's your R, plus pi, which we just solved for is two, 
is 7%. Now let's make a quick change. What if the central bank slows the money supply growth to 3%? Well, inflation would fall to 3 minus 3, the growth rate of money minus the growth rate of GDP is 0. So I would then be 5 plus 0 equals 5%. And so I just did this, it's a quick illustration, but it just shows kind of the same idea. These ideas are all connected, but if inflation drops by a couple of percent, then nominal interest rates will match it percent for percent. Uh, so there you have it. You've met the Fisher effect. Good luck, you guys. Thanks for watching. And yeah. Happy econing. See you next time.